Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I am Thad Swidzinski, and I am a program facilitator working with the Regina District Industry Education Council and Good Spirit School Division. Today, it's my pleasure to introduce Samantha Klapatek, who is the Park Administrative Supervisor at Duck Mountain Provincial Park in East Central Saskatchewan. Samantha graduated from the University of Regina with a bachelor's degree in environmental studies. In her current position, Samantha plays an integral role in the daily operation of the Duck Mountain Provincial Park with an emphasis on customer service and completing administrative work. Just a reminder before we begin, this session is being recorded and will appear on the RDIEC YouTube channel for you or others to view in, this, in the future. We'd also like to request that any student who watched this session go to our website, www.rdiec.ca and complete the student survey that can be found near the top of the website's homepage. Completion of the survey gets your name in a monthly draw for a $50 gift card. Again, the website, www.rdiec.ca. Once again, Samantha, thanks for doing this session today. Welcome, and I'll turn it over to you now. Thanks so much, Dad. Um, I'd like to apologize in advance because there's a little bit of snow removal going on outside. So if you hear some scratching, that's what that is. Um, but hi, everyone. My name is Samantha Klapatuk, and my career is working as the Park Admin Supervisor at Duck Mountain Provincial Park. Um, by working for a Saskatchewan Pro Provincial Park, I technically work for the Government of Saskatchewan within the Ministry of Parks, Culture, and Sport. And I have been in the past position here for about two months, but I've been working within our park system for about six years. And I just want to note that on each of my slides, I have photos of plants, animals, and places that I all took at Duck Mountain. So these are all things you can see here in the different seasons of the year. So this is the office I work in. Um, it's called the Administration Office and Interpretive Center. And our admin office is located at the center of Duck Mountain Provincial Park, right next to our most popular beach, Monistic Beach. When you walk in our front doors, this would be the first thing you would see. As you may notice, we have a lot of taxidermy birds, fish, and ungulates like deer, moose, and elk. And we have a break room in our admin building as well as six offices for park employees. I'm currently in my office right now giving this presentation with my big beautiful window in the back. And the coolest part of our admin office is the interpretive center. The center is filled with loads of information about Duck Mountain's ecology. It covers everything from the different soil types to what berries you shouldn't eat because they're poisonous. And it has information about the history of the park as well. So when I'm not admiring our interpretive center, I do all of my work in an office, mostly on a computer and via my phone. And a large part of our job is being tech savvy and finding new ways to use computers and different machines to make park work easier or run more smoothly. So some of the duties and tasks that I partake in every day, um, one of them is customer service. On a daily basis, I answer phones, I sell products like park entry permits, I respond to hundreds of emails, and I help customers with any inquiries that they may have. I also do the staffing in the park, so I am responsible for the majority of hiring that takes place here, which means I complete all the paperwork required to hire people, and I also participate in all of the interviewing, so if you were to ever want to work at Duck Mountain, odds are you'd see me in the interviewing process. Uh, I do supervising, so it's part of my job to supervise six frontline workers here at Duck Mountain, and the majority of these workers are summer student employees that work from about May to September every year, and they help us complete all of our operations in our busiest season. I pay invoices because to make sure that all the different businesses that work in the park and for the park get paid for their goods and services, and we try to do it in a timely manner. And this also includes coding all the invoices so that the money comes out of the right portion of our park budget. I do revenue processing in the winter when our revenue clerk, because uh, they're a seasonal worker, so when they're laid off, I do all the revenue processing, and I also keep track of our accountable items, which would be those vehicle entry permits. And I also do pretty much anything else. I've cleaned bathrooms, I've built snow mazes, I've shoveled out the office after a snowstorm. I, around here, we try to be as helpful as possible because there's always something to be done and sometimes there's you know extra work in one realm or the other. So for skills and traits that would make somebody a good at this position, I believe being adaptable is a very big one. Uh, in a provincial park, we're working with the four seasons of the year, you know, summer, spring, fall, and winter. And to provide, during these seasons, we try to provide diverse and unique experience, 
experiences for our customers, which means that each season also comes with different work activities and expectations. So in the summer, I obviously have my staff to supervise and support, but in the winter, I genuinely work alone 85, 90% of the time. So I'm, I have to be self-motivated and I tend to do work that takes longer periods because I'll have a lot more quiet time to focus on those big projects. You have to have strong communication skills because when you're working in a tourism industry, that means you'll definitely be communicating with park businesses, customers, your employees, your supervisors, and all of these contact points require the ability to have a strong written and oral communication skills. You need to be able to transfer your information quickly, easily understood, and in a very concise manner. You also have to be willing to be cooperative. Um, again, you're working in a team most of the time and you have a lot of problems to solve, especially in the summer when, you know, campers might be having a rough time, there might be a problem in the park. Um, we also have conservation officers that work within our office, so we do a lot of working with them and helping them out when they need clerical work done. And most people within the park have the goal of keeping the park peaceful, fun, safe, and natural. So the better you are at cooperating with other groups in the park, the better the outcome usually is. Uh, you definitely have to be willing to learn and grow. There has not been a week that I have worked here where I have not learned something. The work in a park is so diverse that you could be learning about the environmental side next one week and then the administrative side the next week. And there's also a lot of park history to digest. And the more you know, the better you are at your job. So the more I know about a boat launch that existed 20 years ago, the more a customer will come in who came here 20 years ago, they'll ask questions. And if I know about it, you know, that makes their experience a lot better because obviously I know everything there is to know about the park, or at least I try. And you have to be able to manage your time well. That is a big thing that I've learned since taking over this position because there will always be a list of tasks to do. And I need to be able to prioritize the things that need to be done right now, like paying an invoice, because you usually only get about 30 days. I have to know that I have to start that right away and get it finished before that 30 days is up. Whereas some things, especially the longer projects, those can usually wait till winter. So it's as long as you keep that to-do list, it makes it easier to manage your time. For a personality that might be best suited for this job, I really think the only mandatory thing would be that you like people or that you would like to work with people because you have your customers and you have your coworkers. And I think that you can pretty much learn all of the other skills and traits that I men mentioned. And you can even learn to love to work with people. It's just a lot easier if you start with that want to help and to work with people and then everything kind of falls into place as you go. So some of the rewards of being a PAS would be that there's always a variety of work. When you're working in the provincial park, the seasons are always changing, the customers are always changing, and since a lot of our workers are summer students, we tend to get new staff every few years once the students have graduated from their programs. So the seasonal change in pace and the regular change in staff means that there's always something new going on, always someone new to meet. Um, as you can probably tell from all my pictures and my photos, I love being outdoors, I love nature, and I love skiing and whatnot. So while I'm not actively doing those activities while at work, I'm actually helping other people to experience a place and activities that I love. And since nature is really good for people's mental and physical help, I definitely enjoy working in a provincial park and sharing that with other people and sharing that with all of our customers. And I also find that there's a very strong feeling of community and support when working for parks. When I need help, there are so many people I can talk, contact from all over the province, and I've never come across anyone within our ministry that wasn't happy to help. And I always feel like I'm part of a team that is working towards the same goals for all of our parks. And that can make a stressful day a lot easier because you know you always have a safety net or somebody to call with your tough problems. Some of the challenges of being a PAS, um, one of them is very similar to the benefits. If you're never having the same day twice, you're also going to have some days that are a lot busier and some days that are a lot less busy. And since it is seasonal work, some portions of the year can be crazy and some portions can be a lot more middle of the road. Um, right now, for example, we're coming up on our fiscal year end as well as our summer student hiring season and spring turnover. So all of that translates to a really high paced schedule for me at this time of the year. Um, and this is something that anyone who works customer service will know. Working with the public is not always pleasant. It can definitely be tough. And sometimes people are going to come into your office with a really bad attitude and negative things to say. And while this might only be one in every 100 people you see in a week, it can be really easy to focus on those bad eggs that make the days tough. 
Um, but throughout my years at Duck Mountain, I've definitely learned to cherish the kind customers and to forget the grumpy ones. And I always say it's like water off a duck's back because, you know, if you can't help them or they don't want to be helped and they just needed somebody to let that negative energy out towards, if it only happens once in a hundred people, then that's okay. There is a hundred, there was 99 people that were nice before them. And then working at a desk all day is definitely a bit of a drawback of my job. Um, to help with it, though, I do make sure that I take regular breaks to go and get coffee in my parks mug. I, you know, bathroom breaks, anything like that that gets you up and moving is definitely good. When I go home at lunch, I like to play some fetch with my puppy. She keeps me active. And then when I go home in the evenings, I will do some stretching or a workout just because if I'm comfortable when I'm sitting, I'm a lot more effective, you know, versus if you had a sore neck and a sore back and your legs were aching, it would make it harder. So you got to be active outside of the, your work hours. All right. So as far as salary and benefits go, um, in my position, you can make from fifty-two to sixty-four thousand dollars a year, which is about twenty-six to thirty-two dollars an hour, and that depends on how long you've been working in the park system. You get a certain amount of a raise every year. And then the benefits we have awesome health, dental, and eye care plans. At least a portion of most exams and procedures are covered, and there are very, very few things that are not covered at all, which is a big deal because I can go to an eye doctor and not spend $400 just to get looked at. And one day when I have kids, those benefits will transfer to them as well, which can make it a lot more affordable to have children. Um, for the earned days off, as a full-time in-scope employee, and in-scope just means I'm within the SGEU union, I receive a day off every third week called an earned day off, or we call them EDOs for short. I appreciate EDOs because it's like having an extra long weekend every three weeks, and you can also work and bank an EDO if you know in a week or two you're going to need a day off. So I would just work my Friday on my EDO week and carry it to a different week. Uh, as far as sick days goes, again, as an in-scope employee, I earn allocated sick time every month that I can use if I come down with a cold or if I have to attend a healthcare appointment that cannot take place on a weekend. And this was really fortunate last year when I got COVID in January and I had to stay home for two weeks. And when you do take your sick time, you're paid as if you were at work. So I did miss two weeks of work, but since I had bank sick time, I got paid like I was here. Uh, then there is overtime. So if I have to work more than eight hours in a day, I qualify for overtime. And our overtime is accumulated at one time and a half, meaning that if I work one hour of overtime, I get paid as if I had worked one and a half, or I can bank 1.5 that amount of time to use on a, again on a later date like you would with an EDO. And then for stat holidays, I'm scheduled to have all of them off. So that means I get Christmas off, I get Thanksgiving off, and if there was ever an exception and I had to work one of those days, I get paid double time and a half to really compensate you for working a designated holiday where a lot of people would have it off. Uh, our pension is the, it's we call it PEP, so it's the Public Employees Pension Plan. And it is a defined contribution pension plan where both me and my employer contribute to a, a defined percentage of my salary towards building up my pension. So all that means is if I put in $10, the government puts in $10 and it all goes into the same savings account. And then it can be uh, set towards different goals. Like right now, mine's in an accelerated growth because I plan on being here for the next 30 years. But if you were going to be retiring next year and you were really worried that the markets were going to crash, you would have it in more of a conservative fund just to say like, no, nope, this is my money and I want to keep it this way until I retire. But for me, if the market goes up, awesome. If it goes down, I'm not going to need the money for a while. Uh, then as far as vacation goes, again, as an in-scope employee, I receive three to six weeks depending on my years of service with the government. And we're able to take those throughout the year. Whenever it works, we usually try to coincide with another employee so that any really important work can be covered by them. Um, an example of when you could use vacation time is I'm getting married in September and I would like to use about a week, a few days before the wedding date and a few days after just so I have time to myself. And then work hours. I work eight hours a day, five days a week, and it is very seldom that I will ever have to work overtime, which is very nice because it means I get to go home when I when the day is done. I don't have to worry about staying later every day or anything like that. As far as educational requirements go, and as far as I'm aware, there's no specific degrees or schooling that you need, but we definitely promote a high school education just to have that on your plate. Um, but it's definitely not a downside to have 
like a university or a polytechnic education when you're going into the workforce. Um, for example, the reason I end up working at Duck Mountain at all is because I was going to the University of Regina to get a bachelor's degree in environmental studies. And I had to be a student looking for a summer job to qualify to work at Duck Mountain. So I needed to be in school to get this job to begin with, even though I'm not technically using my degree to now do my job. But considering the administrative nature of my career, I do believe it would also be beneficial for students to look into office and administration courses or certificates that can be offered. Um, it would also probably not hurt to have a business background or any form of financial training because helping to run a provincial park is very much like running a company or a business. So my journey, this is a bit of a roller coaster. So I graduated high school uh, as the valedictorian. So obviously I did pretty good in school and I, I did like it quite a bit. And then my parents had a strict rule. Everybody goes to school. Doesn't matter if you wanna be an electrician, an engineer, a doctor, an astrophysicist, go to school because you need schooling and education to get a good job or that was their belief. So I said, oh, okay, I'll go for journalism. I like talking. So I applied for journalism and hated it. It just, I had to move far away from home. I had to do everything by myself. It was a city and I'm very much a country girl. So it was a big change and I wasn't a huge fan at the beginning. And then one day during exams, um, I got a text message from my librarian who had worked at the high school that I went to, Barb. And she said, oh, you should apply to Duck Mountain. I work there every summer. I think you'd be really good at the job. You know, it pays well. I think you'd like it. So I said, OK, you know, I didn't really have any plans of what to do as a summer job. So I applied and thank goodness I was hired. So I worked that summer and I was a little bit awkward with customers. I was kind of shy. I didn't like answering the phone because that was just something I never really had to do because we always had texting. And so that was a bit of a learning curve. And I hated wearing a uniform. That was one thing that I just could not get over is I did not like having to wear these vests. I didn't like having to wear all black and white. It was it was a process. So then when I went back to school, I decided, OK, well, I didn't like school my first year. I'm going to switch my major. Maybe it's my major. I went into international studies instead because I liked learning different languages and I thought, well, maybe I could travel with my degree and I didn't like it any better than journalism. So that was an interesting year. And I returned again that next summer as a park gate attendant and I kept doing that every summer. Um, the following school year, I ended up going into environmental studies and I found that even though I didn't like being in university and I didn't like living in the city, I really liked what I was learning. So that made it a lot easier because then I wasn't dreading going to classes because I knew I'd learn something cool about clouds or animals or plants or geography, you know, so I ended up really liking my schooling after that point. And then COVID happened and they sent us all home and I was doing some TAing for my meteorology professor online, which was a good experience. And, you know, you're making money while going to school. And then thank goodness, um, even though our start date was pushed back about a month, the park still opened and we were still able to work that summer. And then it just so happened in the smack dab middle of summer, our revenue clerk got a call that she could go for her knee surgery that she'd been waiting for for years in our busiest season. And she... Everybody was like, oh my gosh, what are we going to do? And um, after asking all of sort of my superiors, because, you know, you have when you're in a government position, the seniority is a big deal. So they asked all the people that were senior to me, well, would you want to be the revenue clerk? And everybody said, oh, please, no, I do not want to do that. And then they came to me and I said, well, I'm going to be here anyway. I like learning. I think it could be interesting. It could be fun. So they put me in a term. And I loved it. It was it was very much a sink or swim. It was very fast learning, but obviously I did a half decent job and the park survived that summer. So then as the fall came, they asked me if I would like to do our winter position where, you know, you rent out snowshoes and you sort of do what you do in the summer, but with people that are coming not for so much for camping, but more for activities. And I said, oh, for sure. Like, I'll take a couple classes online because it was still COVID time. So everything was online. And I ended up working, you know, 40 hours a week. And then I do 10 to 20 hours of schoolwork. And it was a lot, but it was definitely worth it, obviously, because I did end up getting my degree in the spring. And I was so proud of myself because I hated the entire time. It was very hard. But then when you're done, you're sitting there going, wow, I know it was tough, but I'm so proud of myself that I can do those tough things. And if I ever need this degree, I have it and I've proved that I've earned it. So that was really good. And I obviously had a position at the park. So 
I looked into some careers and a lot of the careers I could have gotten with my degree would have required me to move to a major center. And obviously I didn't really like living in a major center when I went to university. So I did, I thought about it and I thought, you know, I love the park. I love everything about the park and I really enjoy the work. Maybe the park will have me for the rest of my working days. You know, if I put it out there and I see what everyone says. So it just so happened that I got a whole year of experience or about a year and a half of experience and our current paths or our previous paths now said, well, now that COVID's some of the restrictions are lifted, I want to be able to go back to Arizona every winter, which meant that she couldn't hold the paths position because the paths position is one of the very few park positions that's year round. A lot of them are seasonal. So she said, I would be more than willing to work a seasonal job. I'd like to retire or to remove myself from this current position. And it just so happens that I was the only person in our park with the training and the education for it. And um, so they posted it and everybody applied. And I happened to be the most the most senior and the most qualified member. And we did a little interview and stuff and I got in. So that was very exciting. And it was not where I expected to be. I thought I was going to be a journalism major. I thought I was going to be on TV. I thought I was going to be an international studies something in Japan or Germany or but I ended up you know 20 kilometers away from home and I couldn't be happier about it. So the opportunities related to my job there's a lot as I've already mentioned multiple times um, the Saskatchewan Provincial Parks offer a lot of summer student positions so it's a really great way to get your foot into the door for being a government employee and it's a great experience if you ever do want to work in parks for your long-term career and there are lots of options too so you could be a park gate attendant like I was when I started where you're mainly doing customer service you could be a maintenance employee who cleans and cares for the park and works outdoors you could be an interpreter who works directly with the public to provide fun and educational programming or you could be a park ranger who works to enforce park rules and regulations like having a camp a park entry permit on every vehicle or keeping campsites animal attractant free like mini fridges and bird feeders There is also quite a few chances for advancement. Um, Much like my own journey, it's possible for a summer student to work their way up to being a supervisor, like a park admin supervisor or even a revenue clerk. And it's also possible that I, as a PAS, could work my way up to the position of a park manager or regional director. Uh, The way to access those advancements is just to take part in all the training that you can get, to learn from your peers, ask a lot of questions, and just be willing to take chances. It's also very important to network and to make a positive reputation for yourself in the workplace. So I want it so that if they ask somebody the paths from Greenwater, even though maybe I've never met her, I've always just emailed her, talked to her over meetings. If they talk to her about me, I want them to say, oh, yeah, she's a really nice person. She seems like she does her job really well. She responds quickly, all that stuff. So you definitely want to make a good impression with absolutely everyone you talk to. And what could this occupation lead to? That is broad because the skill set what you learn when working for a provincial park can honestly translate to positions all over government as well as the private sector and it's not uncommon for an employee of a provincial park to move into a position within like our visitor experience branch or our revenue branch and it's also not uncommon for employees to work in other government ministries like highways before they come to parks culture and sport because there's just genuinely a lot of careers that have similar skill sets to working here. And for life work balance, um, I thought I would include some pictures of activities, people and pets that I like to make time for outside of work. Uh, The cute puppy is Nissa. The big cat is Finn and the little one is Whiskey. The handsome guy on the left is my fiance, Craig, and my two skiing buddies are my mom and dad. And I have to say, I honestly think my life and work balance is healthy with this career. I have regularly scheduled days off where I can plan to go see my siblings or friends. I have EDOs that allow me to take an extra day off if I have something important that I need to do. I have vacation time that allows me to prioritize important life events like my wedding. I have sick time for when I really can't or shouldn't be working. And I never feel like I'm too busy to have a life outside of work. I also feel that if I work hard every week that I deserve those days of rest and relaxation and even going on adventures. And there are definitely some jobs out there where you never feel like you have time off to enjoy or you always are too overwhelmed and too stressed to even enjoy the time off that you get. But so far, I've only been here two months, but so far, it doesn't feel like that'll be an issue with this career path. I definitely feel like I have a good balance of spending time with my family, knowing I only have to work eight hours a day, You know, I never really have to worry about 
having days to myself. And that's everything I have prepared. So if there's any questions, I'm more than open to answer them. Well, uh, Samantha, thank you so much for um, providing such a detailed and engaging presentation. I know a lot of us in Saskatchewan uh, really enjoy uh, our parks, but we have no sense of, of the uh, the background work that happens and, and all the important things that you do. Mm -hmm. So again, thanks so much for this. And uh, I certainly know that uh, students who are going to be viewing this will get a really good sense of uh, of not only um, your position, but some of the uh, the potential within the park system. And of course, sharing your journey was very important as well and mm -hmm. how you got there. And uh, again, uh, thanks so much for this. And yes, of course. Uh, we, will, uh, we will talk to you soon. Perfect, thank you.